Good morning. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Well, what a pleasant sight it is to see all of you here this morning. We have missed you, and we often think of you, and we have had the privilege and the pleasure of fellowshipping with a number of you, but that number is way too small. We sincerely regret that we've not been able to connect with more of you on a personal level and hear what God is doing in your lives. But we are excited about what we see and hear that God is doing in your midst. And what is going on is that Jesus is building his church just like he said he would. He is doing it here, he is doing it in Campeche, and he is doing it in many parts of the world, all over the place, places that we don't even know of. Jesus is true to his word. And we want to just thank you for your prayers, for your support and encouragement. It is, truly is exciting to be a part of the work that God is doing all over the place. Lord willing, on Tuesday we will be heading back. And uh, as the saying goes, uh, one person's loss is another person's gain. Um, we will be leaving Esther behind this time as we go back. It'll just be the three of us going back. And so that brings it additional. <laughs> yeah, we just trust that she will be a blessing here to you. And we're glad that she can be a part of the church family here. Um, I am grateful for the opportunity that we have had just to be here in your midst during this time. Regret that we won't be able to be here tonight as you uh, celebrate the new life uh, of those whom the Lord has drawn to himself. Uh, Lord willing, if the, uh, he uh, adjusts the weather favorably, then we plan to be in Leamington this, this evening to share with the church over there. Last Sunday night, we had the privilege of being in Milverton sharing with the church over there, and uh, it truly is a blessing to have so many uh, connections and relationships that we can enjoy uh, as we have even during this time. And at the same time, we miss Kabeche. Uh, I already got some pictures this morning of the congregation as they're worshiping there this morning. And uh, they are excited, they are blessed, and God undertook for the needs during this time that we were gone for the first two Sundays. Uh, John and Eva Claussen from uh, Seminole, Texas were there ministering there. And this morning, Pedro Neufeld is sharing the word of God there. And so, uh, and these couples, these families have been living in our house. So our, our house will be uh, occupied during the whole time that we're gone. And we're grateful that we were able to make that available. And the, the church there is growing. Um, we're usually a little over 100 people when we come together on a Sunday morning, so it's a little bit less than here, but that's all right. Um, growth is, is good, it's healthy, but when it comes too fast, then there's too many challenges. Uh, you just can't keep up with everything. So we are very grateful for, for the growth there, and we are grateful for, for your prayers. Um, I'm also thankful how God confirms his word. He said, let everything be established by two or three witnesses. Well, this morning, the witnesses were up here already uh, testifying, and uh, it is very much in line with the message the Lord laid on my heart this morning. The title of the message is, The Kingdom of Heaven Has Come. The Kingdom of Heaven Has Come. This was... The message that John the Baptist declared in Matthew 10, verse 7, or rather in John, uh, Matthew 3, verse 2, is saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I had often wondered, what does it mean that the kingdom of heaven is at hand? I knew it had to do with the fact that Jesus had come, but there was more to it than that. When Jesus began to preach in uh, Matthew 4, verse 17, the first words out of his mouth were, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He didn't come and say, Here I am. 
No, he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was something bigger than what eyes could see. Something that was much greater, much farther reaching than what man could see. The prophet says when we looked at him, there was nothing desirable or, or splendous you know, that, that, that we could look at and say, wow, this must be the son of God. No, it was the way he died in humility and poured out his life that the Roman centurion said, surely this was the son of God. But it wasn't in that the people looked at him and beheld him. So the kingdom of heaven is greater, is more than a man, or that fits into the form of a man. Although God was incarnate in Jesus, representing the kingdom of heaven. And so he declared, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now how does... Or how did the kingdom of heaven come into the world? We have a beautiful picture in Luke chapter 1. Um, and we often hear this at Christmas time when the angel came uh, and spoke to, to Mary. He appeared to Mary there in Luke chapter 1, 26 to 38. And I won't be, take time to read the whole portion there now, but we'll be referring to it. Um, we see, first of all, that... Mary heard the word of God. The angel, the messenger of God, came and said to Mary, you are favored and you will be with child and he will be the savior of the world. Of his kingdom, there will be, uh, it will increase and there will be no end to his kingdom. Mary heard the word the word of God, and she believed the word of God. She said, may it be unto me even as you have said. She received it. She made herself available and received the message from the Lord. As a result, the spirit of God activated through her faith the word of God and a seed was planted inside her. A new life started within her, and as she cooperated and yielded herself to her, or to, to God. And then we read that that which was born, the angel said, that which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. So a new life started within her. As she heard the word of God, as she believed it and received it and made herself available, the Holy Spirit did that work of starting this new life. And it was a life that began to grow that moment and continued to grow and expand as Jesus was born, as he grew up, and proclaimed that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. But it started when God's word came. And it was heard and believed. Then the Holy Spirit activated it, empowered it, and brought forth the kingdom of heaven. The first blessing that Jesus pronounced in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, verse 3, he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He pronounced a blessing of the expansion of the kingdom of heaven. And he says it comes to those who are poor in spirit. It doesn't mean those who are ignorant of the scriptures as it is sometimes um, explained. Especially in the area where we're working in that culture, uh, they're very much promoting ignorance, the less you know, the less you're responsible. So if you are poor spiritually, then you're blessed. That is totally not what this is uh, saying here. But he's, Jesus is saying that those who recognize their spiritual bankruptcy and come to him, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. To them he gives the kingdom of heaven. We have to recognize, we have to come to the place that our works will not do it. Our righteousness 
will not enter the kingdom of heaven, will not bring us into the presence of God, but only the righteousness of Christ. So he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So we see it as a growing uh, kingdom. Now the question we ask, how do we receive the kingdom of heaven? In Luke chapter 18, verse 17, we read, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. How do we receive the kingdom of heaven? As a little child. How do we receive a little child? Number one, through birth or through adoption. Then we accept that child as, as part of us, as part of our family. We nurture it and it takes on our name. That's how we receive a child. And that is also how we receive the kingdom of heaven. I will elaborate on that in a minute. In Luke 17, 21, Jesus said, Neither shall they say, Lo, here or there, for behold, the kingdom of heaven is within you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Now, how does the kingdom of heaven come to be inside of us? In the same way that the kingdom of heaven entered into the life of Mary. She heard the word of God. She believed the message. And she made herself available. She said, be it unto me according to as you have said. And the Holy Spirit did the work. And the new life began to grow in her. And it only kept growing and expanding from there on. The seed is the word of God. And it is sown in our hearts through the hearing of the word. In Romans chapter 10 verse 17 it says, For the faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. And in John 5 24 Jesus said, he who hears my words and believes on him who has sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. The kingdom of heaven has come inside of you when you hear and you believe and you take him at his word. Then the Holy Spirit comes and activates that word and new life is produced within you and it is the kingdom of heaven and it is a growing kingdom. It will continue to grow and flourish and bear fruit and expand. That is the nature of the kingdom. We'll look at that a little bit later. In order to have the kingdom of heaven come within us, we must, number one, hear the word of God and secondly, we must consent to it. We must agree with the word of God. The word of God, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. When we hear the word of God, we must believe it. And when we believe it, the spirit of God then activates that new life within us. And so the kingdom of heaven has come to be within us. In John chapter 3, verse 5, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. The first birth is a water birth. The second birth is a spirit birth. It's not a physical birth. And so it has to be a work of the Holy Spirit done within us. It can never be done by a work that you and I do. I shared the gospel with a, with a man about three or four weeks ago. And I asked him about his relationship with God. And he said, oh, he said, I would have to clean up a lot of things 
in order to come to God. And so I had the opportunity to share with him that we cannot clean up our own lives and make ourselves acceptable to God. That's why Jesus came. So we have to come before him honest and open and tell him how it is. And he cleanses us and transforms us and does this work in us. Well, to make a long story short, that man kneeled with me on our living room floor and he called on the Lord Jesus Christ to be his Savior and Lord. And the kingdom of heaven expanded. It was now inside of him. This new life then must be nurtured. It cannot just be abandoned and left to itself and thinking that somehow it will already um, continue to grow. No, Jesus said, in, um, or Peter said in 1 Peter 2.2, 2, he said, as newborn babies desire the sincere, sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Well, many of you, especially that big group that was on here last Sunday morning, uh, you're experiencing it on a daily and on a nightly basis that little ones, newborn babies, uh, don't settle for once a day or once a week feeding. It has to be every few hours. They desire, they are born with a desire for milk so that they may grow thereby. And that is the analogy he uses here about how we are to nurture our spirit. This new life that the Spirit of God has planted inside of us to nurture it and with the Word of God so that we may grow thereby. Ephesians 4 verse 15 says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. So the spiritual life is a, is a growing life. The kingdom of heaven is a growing kingdom. Then, Mary was told that that which is conceived within you will be called the Son of God. This new life within us is a God life. Someone quoted that verse there before, that uh, it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. The Apostle Paul um, Acknowledge that this new life was not that he had started a new page. You know, he had put all the old things aside. Now he was going to, uh, you know, it wasn't a New Year's resolution. No, he had been born anew of the Spirit of God. He had been transformed and he was growing. And, and uh, there's a need to grow in this new life. And that this life was from God. It was Christ in him. And in Galatians 3.26 says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. This new life, this, the, the expansion of the kingdom of heaven comes through faith in Christ Jesus and that makes us children of God. We take on his name. What is the nature of this kingdom? Matthew 13, verse 31 and 32, it's, uh, Jesus told them a parable. It says, another parable he set forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least or the smallest of all seeds. But when it grew, or when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in their branches thereof. He says the kingdom of heaven, the nature of the kingdom of heaven is that it grows. It starts small, but it grows. When it is planted, it grows. When it is planted in the soil of faith that is rich in faith, this seed will grow and will become a tree. In Isaiah 9, verse 7, when the prophet Isaiah foretold the coming of the kingdom of heaven, the coming of Christ, he said it this way, he says, And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. 
Every plant and every tree has its limits, right? It will grow to a certain extent. And sometimes we see a certain type of plant or whatever, it'll grow beyond what we ever seen before or expected. But he says, of the increase of God's kingdom, he says, there will be no end. There is no limit. It will continue to grow and increase. That's the nature of this kingdom. It never stops growing. So what is our responsibility then towards the kingdom of heaven? In John chapter 20, verse 21, it says, Then said Jesus unto them, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. How did the kingdom of heaven come to earth? God sent his Son. And when his Son came, the kingdom of heaven was at hand. And the kingdom of heaven was preached. And the kingdom of heaven continued to expand. Now Jesus said, just as the Father sent me, so send I you. In order to be sent, there are some requirements here. Number one, we have to become a representative, we have to become part of the kingdom of heaven before we can help expand the kingdom of heaven. So for those of you who by faith have put your trust in Christ, have received the gift of salvation, the gift of eternal life, the kingdom of heaven has now come within you. When you heard the word, it was the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When you believed it, it moved in. And now you become a part of this kingdom. So as you go out now, you can declare the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And when someone believes it, it moves inside of them. That is the nature and the power of this kingdom. It is a kingdom that grows without limits. There is no respecter of persons, no respecter of age. This man I was just telling you about... He was 47 years old, and he lamented the fact later, he sent me a message while we're here, and he says, it took me 40, more than 40 years to recognize that I could not put my trust in man. He had always been putting his trust in man. He had been looking to the leaders of his community, and now he realized that God says, cursed is everyone who puts his trust in man. But he went back to those leaders and he told them, I no longer fear you, I now fear God. And they were very disturbed and they said to him, you have obviously no fear of God if you don't fear us. But he now had the truth that he could base it on, the word of God is no longer the word of man. You see, the kingdom of heaven came to him when he heard it, by faith he received it, and the kingdom of heaven moved inside of him. And so as he went back to his colony, the kingdom of heaven was expanding. And two weeks later, we had the opportunity to go into his home. We were invited to his home. He had invited all of his married children, his single children, and they all sat in a circle in the living room and they had the opportunity to tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They heard the word. They also received the written copy of his word. And they also received an audio copy of his word because not all of them were able to read. So the kingdom of heaven is expanding. It is growing. In Matthew 10 verse 7, Jesus said, as you go, notice it doesn't say if you go. Because if the kingdom of heaven has come within you, it will grow. It will expand. It cannot be contained. There is no limits to it. As you go, what do you say? Saying, 
the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is the message that you and I have received. And as we go and wherever we go, we can say the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That is, if it is, is inside of us. And if the people whom we, to whom we declare that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, if they, by faith, receive it, then it moves inside of them. And then wherever they go, they can say the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But that is not the end of our responsibility when we have declared that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus sent his disciples out. and well, he, First of all, he said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. But in Matthew 28, verse 18 and 20, Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. See, the kingdom of heaven had come to earth. Now he had all authority here on earth as well. He says, therefore, go ye. He said it with authority. Go ye and preach the gospel. Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all things that several have commanded you. Now we have a, an additional responsibility to those who have received the kingdom of heaven. We have a responsibility to teach them the nature of the kingdom of heaven. We have to teach them the ways of the kingdom of heaven so that they can be equipped to go and help others and tell others that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see, the kingdom of heaven keeps growing. It keeps expanding. It keeps going out. Wherever the ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven go, that's where the kingdom of heaven is, and that's where you can with confidence declare the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Last night I had a little memory lapse and I left you hanging because during the time I was showing you the pictures of the team that went to Oaxaca, I said, notice the young man on the right, so I'll tell you a story about him later. And later somebody, a little bit too late, somebody came and said, well, what happened to Benjamin? Well, Benjamin grew up in one of the local colonies there in Campeche and he had been taught and indoctrinated that you cannot know if God accepts you. You cannot know if you are saved, and if you ever say that, you are blaspheming against God. But Benjamin had been coming to our fellowship for a time because he was working for one of the men in the church, and so he kept coming to church, he kept coming to youth, and uh, he was mingling with the youth. He's a very, very quiet Young man, you can hardly figure out where he's at. But he kept coming to, even to the practices as we were preparing for, for a Christmas program. And he was there at the final practice. But then a, three days later, when the program was on, Benjamin didn't show up. And he didn't show up the next day, Sunday, for church either. He didn't come to youth anymore, and he didn't show up at church anymore. But... I kept communicating with him, and I just made myself available, that I would, and I was aware that he was struggling very, very much. You see, between the practice and the program, he had visited his family back in the colony, who, with tears and pleading and manipulation, his parents pleaded with him not to go that route, not to believe and not to associate with people who say that they know that they're born again. And so he was very, very confused. But thank God he kept reading the scriptures, the Plotice, New Testament. A few Sundays ago, I, I had the opportunity, a late Sunday night, to meet with him. And I said to him, in different words, though, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we each took a Bible, and we went through the scriptures, and I showed him what the word of God says. At the end, he said, I know that the word of God is true, and I want to accept Jesus, 
But he says, I want to do that when I'm by myself. And I said, that is fine. But he said, please let me know. I said, don't keep it to yourself. Let me know. And so another week went by. And the Monday, we, we left on Tuesday. And Monday night, um, probably about 6.30, close to 6.30, I get, a, I get a call or message from Benjamin. And he says, are you busy tonight? <laughs> we had two appointments. And I said to him, um, we, have, we have a couple of appointments, but the, the first one only starts in half an hour if, uh, if you, oh, he says he wanted to come and see me. And I said, if you can come right away, that would be fine. He says, I'm on my way. And I heard there was something uh, fresh in his voice. And so he came down and he said, I just want to tell you that I accepted Jesus into my life. The kingdom of heaven moved in. I said, Benjamin, how did it happen? He said, I was reading the word of God. And then I chose to believe what it says. I said, am I at liberty to share this with others? He says, yes, you can share that with others. You see, when we go, when you and I go, wherever we go, we have the, we have the authority to say the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If they believe the word, the kingdom of heaven will move right inside. And when the kingdom of heaven moves inside, it is an everlasting kingdom. It is a growing and expanding kingdom. It will just keep right on going. If we cooperate, if we like Mary will say, be it unto me, even as you will. It doesn't matter where, whether it is here in Port Burwell or in Hopalchan or wherever it may be. The kingdom of heaven needs to be proclaimed. And Jesus said the end will not come until the kingdom of heaven has been proclaimed in all the world. You see, it is not fair that anyone should perish without having heard that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I want to challenge you this morning. If you have heard the word of God, if you have heard it said that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and you have believed that. And if, the, if you know, if you have the assurance that the kingdom of heaven lives inside of you. And that kingdom is growing inside of you if, as you are nurturing it. Tell others. In your workplace. Just tell them. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, they might tell you that the world is going to the devil. Or all kinds of things. Just tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then show them from the scriptures how this works. How it started with Mary. How it came to your life. How you heard that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. How you by faith received it and it moved right inside of you. And that you now are sharing it with others that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. See, this is good news. This is what we've been called to, to go and tell all creatures. Everywhere that they may know. The kingdom of heaven is a kingdom that will never end. If you are part of the kingdom of heaven this morning, then I just want to encourage you, nurture this new life with the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby and tell others that the kingdom of heaven has come. And this kingdom will never be overtaken by any other kingdom. In fact, we have the final word that this kingdom overtakes Every kingdom and every opposing kingdom will be put under the feet of the king of kings of the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Amen. Even so, Lord Jesus, come. May thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. To his glory.
soul astray from the straight and narrow way that leads to happiness in life eternal but to Jesus I did pray he heard my prayer rescued me that very day that very day praise God I'm free I've been set free by the grace of God I'm free no more the paths of sin I trod I am free the blood has cleansed every sinful stain I'm free praise the living God I'm free again I'm free again on the sinful path below all in sorrow grief and woe the sinner's load is mighty hard to carry but I've left the shifting sand upon the rock solid rock I'll take my stand I'll take my stand praise God I'm free I've been set free by the grace of God I'm free peace with him no more the paths of sin I trod I'm free, the blood has cleansed every sinful stain, I'm free, praise the living God, I'm free again, I'm free again, soon the pearly gates I'll see. By the grace of God, I'm free. No peace within. No more the paths of sin I trod. I am free. The blood has cleansed every sinful stain. I'm free. Praise the living. 